Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our overview of diabetes in Farsi and English. We're so pleased that you could join us today. My name is Kim Hansen, and I'm Executive Director at Diabetes Canada, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by Manas Puramadi, who is a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator and an expert in all things diabetes. So thank you so much, Manas, for being with us today. We're thrilled to have your expertise. Um, I wanted to let our viewers know that we will be recording this session and sharing it on Diabetes Canada's YouTube channel so that you can review any of the facts that we're going to share. Uh, you can share it with any of your friends or family members who might be interested in, and you can refer back to the slides that we'll show today. Um, and I also wanted to invite our viewers to share questions with us at any point. Um, you can do so if you're watching us via Facebook Live, please just enter your questions in the comments. And if you are joining us on Zoom, please feel free to use the Q&A function to send your questions in. So uh, Manaz, let's get started now. Uh, tell us about diabetes. Is it a serious disease and how many Canadians does it really affect? First, I wanna say good afternoon to all the participants. And yes, diabetes is a serious disease. About 11 million Canadians are, have diabetes or pre-diabetes and represents one person in four Canadian have diabetes and 4.2 million live with diabetes or pre-diabetes, but also we have about 6 million which may develop diabetes in the future. And uh, the saying is that every three minutes, one person in Canada is diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, my estimation is that by year 2025, there will be about 13.6 million Canadian uh, with diabetes or pre-diabetes. Wow. And why is it important to learn about it? Because uh, the, pre the prevalence of diabetes is about 9.5% of the total population, which they have type 1 or type 2, but the overall estimate prevalence diabetes, including the undiagnosed cases, could be 28.5%. The prevalence of diabetes is different in different uh, provinces of Canada, uh, starting with New Brunswick having the highest rate, which is 12.5%, and Nunavut have, having the lowest, which is 3.9%. Now, I'm going to repeat it in uh, Farsi. بیماری قند یک بیماری جدی است بله 11 میلیون در کانادا بیماری قند دارند که بیماری قند یک یا دو هستش و و در به طور کلی میشه گفتش که از هر چهار نفر کانادایی یک نفر دایبیت داره و در هر دقیقه یک نفر تشخیص داده میشه که بیماری قند داره با سا در سال تخمین زده شده که تا سال 2025 13.6 6 میلیون کانادایی بیماری دایبیتیس خواهند داشت البته دستمیشن این است که 9.9.5 درصد مردم کانادا دایبیت دارند که دایبیتیس یک یا دو هستش ولی این شامل کیسایی نیستش که تشخیص داده نشده که این میبره تشخیص رو به 28 و نیم درصد و شروع بیماری قند در کانادا در استانهای مختلف در ایالتهای مختلف متفاوت هستش نیو برانزویک بالاترین درصد رو داره که دوازده و نیم درصده و نونوویت در, در پروانس نونوویت سه و نه درصد Fantastic. Thank you so much, Manaz. It's clear that you know lots of, about diabetes. So now let's see what our viewers know about diabetes. We'll, we'll do a quick poll. So um, follow along with us, please. Which of the following questions is, tr or statements rather, is true? Eating too much sugar can cause diabetes. Insulin is a cure for diabetes. Diabetes is a serious disease like cancer or heart disease and there are two types of diabetes. So for those of you joining us in Zoom, there are potentially more than one true uh, statement there. So just check those that you think may or may not be true, and we'll see how much our viewers know already about diabetes. Okay, well maybe just uh, 
give another two seconds. And um, okay, we'll go through the answers. So uh, yes, eating too much sugar does not cause diabetes. That's a false statement. And I know Manas is gonna share with us in a short minute um, what the, the real guidance is around best practices for healthy eating, uh, but sugar is not a, a culprit in that way. Um, insulin is most definitely not a cure for diabetes. It is a really important and critical treatment for many of us, but it is not a cure. Those of us that take insulin still very much have diabetes. Um, diabetes most definitely is a serious disease like cancer or heart disease. Many folks sadly die of it and there are other complications that mamas will talk about. And so it's one that we all need to take action on. And finally, uh, we know that, um, that uh, there are definitely uh, more than two types of diabetes, which Manaz will give us an overview in a few moments. So thanks for playing along to our viewers and we'll carry on with the educational portion of this session. So Manaz, can you start please by explaining to us um, what changes happen in our bodies when we develop diabetes? Okay, I'm going to talk about what is diabetes. I want to talk first about when you don't have diabetes and then we'll see what changes happen when you develop diabetes. In general, we need to look at where are we getting our energies for our body. Our body gets energies from foods called carbohydrates. When we eat carbohydrates are starches and grains, fruits and uh, milk and yogurt and little bit of the vegetables. When we eat these foods and we digest, the final product in our body is sugar. Sugar is the source of energy for our body and 50% of this sugar goes to your brain. Brain leaves on sugar. Now, how this process happens? We digest, sugar goes to bloodstream, but how the body uses sugar as energy, we need a hormone called insulin. And that hormone is produced in body by pancreas. In normal condition, the amount of the insulin pancreas produces is enough to take care of the sugar coming from the food to your body, to your bloodstream, and change all those sugars to energy. And then what happens, your blood sugar stays normal. Now, what happens when you have diabetes? There will be either your body is not able to make any insulin, which is type 1 diabetes, or your body still makes insulin, uh, but may not be enough, or maybe your body cannot use that insulin efficiently, which basically is type two. And then what happens when you get the sugar from these food and it goes to the bloodstream, some of this sugar changes to energy, but the rest stays in your body. And then when you have blood work, it shows like you have higher blood sugar and then you will be diagnosed by diabetes. No, I'm going to repeat it in Farsi. در مورد بیماری قند اول باید ما نگاه بکنیم ببینیم که شکر چی است و از کجا میاد و ما چرا شکر احتیاج داریم بدن انسان انرژی رو از شکر میگیره شکر از غذاهایی میاد که اونها رو کربوهیدرات بهش میگن کربوهیدرات گروهی از غذا هستند که شامل مواد نشاسته ای شامل میوه ها و شامل شیر و لبنیات که وقتی ما اینا رو میخوریم و اینها رو در سیستم گوارش هست میکنیم آخرین محصولی که به دست میاد شکر هستش شکر برای بدن ضروری است شکر به ما انرژی میده و این شکر میره تو جریان خون که بره به تمام نقاط بدن برسه و تبدیل به انرژی بشه ولی شکر در تنهایی خودش نمیتونه تبدیل به انرژی بشه و برای این کار احتیاج به هورمونی داره به نام انسولین که پانکریاس یا پانکراس در فارسی در این هورمون رو برای بدن تولید میکنه وقتی که شما دایبیتیز بیماری قند ندارید این هورمون به اندازه کافی تولید میشه و شکری رو که از مواد غذایی میاد اینا رو تبدیل به انرژی میکنه و در نتیجه شکر خون در حد طبیعی میمونه و شما دایبیتیز ندارین ولی وقتی شما بیماری قند دارین این انسولین در بدن یا اصلا تولید نمیشه مثل بیماری قند نوع یک یا تایپ و یا اینکه مقدار انسولینی که تولید میشه یا 
کافی نیست و یا اینکه بدن نمیتونه انسولین رو به طور خیلی خوب ازش استفاده بکنه در نتیجه یه مقدار از شکری که از غذا میاد تبدیل به انرژی میشه و قسمت بعد این میمونه تو بدن و وقتی شما میرین آزمایش خون میدین دکترتون میگه که شما یا بیماری قند دو دارین یا که بیماری ق... یا پیر دایبیتیس هستین که بیماری قند ندارین ولی قند خونتون بالاست Okay, that's about the diabetes. I covered Great. that. Too. So thanks, Mana. So then, when someone gets diabetes, you know what stops working? Uh, nothing stops working. It's just if you have type one, no insulin is produced. If you have type two, your body is still making uh, making insulin, but it's not making enough to take care of the sugar coming from. Uh, food and insulin is not enough to move the sugar and change it to energy in your cells. Great. So that's perhaps a good segue into our next question, which is, we mentioned a few minutes ago that there are more than two types of diabetes. Can you tell us what different types there are? Okay. We have type 1 diabetes. 10% of people living with diabetes have type 1. And people with type 1 is the body doesn't make any insulin. They remove insulin from outside. They may have it injected or they use the insulin pump. And type 1 diabetes usually occurs in people under age 20. That means young adults and children. And there is an... Uh, the cause is not known. They don't know how does it happen, but the body stops producing insulin. And these people will need insulin from outside and otherwise they cannot take care of their blood sugar. No, uh, I go in Farsi and then go to type 3 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Bimari Khande no a yek. وقتی هستش که بدن اصلا انسولین نمیتونه تولید بکنه ده درصد مردمی که بیماری قند دارن بیماری قند نوع اولو دارن این زیاد شیو نداره ولی بیماری ها کسانی که بیماری قند یک رو دارن چون بدنشون انسولین درست نمیکنه اینا باید انسولین رو از خارج به بدنشون بیارن که اینو به صورت قلم های انسولین تزریق میکنن یا به صورت پمپ استفاده میکنن نوع اول در بیشتر در سنین زیر 20 سال اتفاق میفته در تینیج وقتی که از سن کوچیکی تا زیر 20 سال و شروعش هم ناگهانیه بدن یک دفعه قطع میکنه درست کردن انسولین رو و دلیلش هم به هیچ به هیچ وجه شناخته نشده است I've got type pre-diabetes, I guess. Yeah. I should go We have pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes is when, when you go to your doctor and says, you know what, you have high sugar, a little bit sugar, they call border sugar, and, but you don't have diabetes. That's the time your blood glucose levels are higher than normal, but they are below the level to be diagnosed at type 2 diabetes. But well, when, what are those, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what are those levels that are normal? Uh, when they test like uh, A1C or uh, blood sugar. Blood sugar. A1C is 6.5%. Lower than between six to six point four percent is prediabetes. When you do the A1C test, which they, when you go to the lab and they do the blood work, and it's uh, when it comes out six to six point four percent, that means you have prediabetes. Because when you go to six point five, then you are in type two diabetes. Now, what happens when you have prediabetes? You are at higher risk of developing type two diabetes in the future. You may not have any symptoms, but also this is the stage you need to take care of it, not to go to the next stage, which is type two diabetes. Now, in Persian, uh, in Farsi, Pre-diabetes مرحله‌ای هستش که قند خون بالاتر از نرماله ولی در اندازه ای نیست که تشخیص بدم بگن که شما بیماری قند نوع دوم دارین وقتی که شما آزمایش خون میدین یک آزمایش رو انجام میدن که به اسم A1C معروف هسته شناخته شده و اگر A1C شما 6 از 6 تا 6 ممیز 4 درصد باشه 
اون مرحله مرحله پریدایبیتیزه که چون بعد که میره به شیشونی میشه بیماری قند نوع دوم شما ممکنه که هیچ علایمی از بالا بودن قند خون نداشته باشید ولی وقتی که به شما بگم پریدایبیتیز دارید این وقتی که شما باید از این مسئله مواظبت بکنید که به مرحله بعدی که بیماری قند نوع دوم هست نرید Great. Now we are going to talk about type 2 diabetes is more common. About 90% people with diabetes, they have type 2. In type 2 diabetes, your pancreas is still working, but it may not produce enough insulin for you, or the insulin is being produced, cannot be used by your body. Now, when you at, at this stage, your A1C is usually above 6.5%, but this is the time you need to take care of it and manage your diabetes to prevent or delay complications. Great. And did you want to repeat that in Farsi? Yes. yes. بیماری قند نوع دو یا تایپ تو دایبیتیز بیماری هستش که 90 درصد از مردمی که بیماری قند دارن بیماری قند نوع دوم رو دارن این بیشتر معمول هستش در بیماری قند نوع دوم پانکراس درست کار نمیکنه مقدار انسولینی که تولید میکنه یا این انسولین زیاد کافی نیست یا اینکه انسولینی که تولید میشه بدن شما در یک حالتی است که نمیتونه این انسولین رو به طور خوب ازش استفاده بکنه و قند خون رو بیاره پایین این وقتی که شما باید در کنترل قند خونتون خیلی جدی باشین که جلوی عوارض جانبی که از بیماری قند نوع دوم به وجود میاد بگیرید حالا یه حالت now there is another type which is called gestational diabetes this, this diabetes happens uh, during pregnancy and usually affects 3.7% of the pregnant women but women but the point is that uh, every Every uh, woman, uh, every woman is getting uh, pregnant. It's uh, recommended to have the test to make sure they don't have high blood sugar. They don't have diabetes during pregnancy. And having high blood sugar, having gestational diabetes, could cause uh, serious uh, complications. It may cause uh, the baby to die, or it may cause different uh, different complications during uh, delivery. Very during birth, and also uh, people, uh, women who have uh, pre gestational diabetes during pregnancy, they are at high high risk of developing type two diabetes uh, later on. Uh, uh, having gestational diabetes may cause the baby to be bigger bigger than four kilos or nine pounds, and it may end up in C-section. That means you cannot have a natural birth. That's why it's a good idea. Of if you are you have diagnosed with gestational diabetes to take care of it to exercise uh, as tolerated and to eat healthy and try not to gain too much weight during pregnancy now gestational diabetes بیماری قندی هستش که در زمان بارداری اتفاق میفته و تمام و سه ممیز هفت درصد از زنان باردار در خطرین هستند که در دوران بارداری بیماری قند داشته باشند برای همین هم توصیه میشه که تمام زنان باردار برای بیماری قند آزمایش بشن اگر تشخیص داده بشه که در دوران بارداری شما قند خون بالایی دارین خیلی باید از این مسئله مواظبت بکنیم برای اینکه ممکنه باعث مرگ بچه در شکم بشه یا باعث بشه که بچه بیش از حد رشد بکنه و باعث بشه که چیزهای مختلفی کامپلیکیشن‌های مختلفی در موقع زایمان به وجود بیاد که ممکنه مجبور بشن سزاریان بکنن و بچه به طور طبیعی به دنیا نیاد و همچنین ما, ما 
مادر و بچه در آینده در ممکنه که در خطرین باشن که بیماری قند نوع دوم بگیرن و بچه همچنین ممکنه که با قند خون خیلی پایین به دنیا بیاد I forgot to say like in this case sometimes during uh, gestational diabetes the baby may born with really low blood sugar with hypoglycemia Thanks, Manaz. That's great information for us. Now, you mentioned earlier that type 1 diabetes, we don't know of any way to prevent it. Um, so, and in some cases, we think that type 2 may be able to be delayed or prevented. So what are the risk factors for type 2 diabetes? Uh, we are looking at risk factors, actually you call them the risk factors you could control and you cannot control. The risk factors which are out of our controls are the risk factors aging. First there's aging. Everybody after age 40 is uh, at risk of developing type 2 diabetes and we cannot stop aging. I also, I have to mention now, we see type 2 diabetes in younger ages under 40. No, also if you have a family member with diabetes, like say your parents, your grandparents, your uncle, your aunt, or your sisters and brothers, they had diabetes, you have higher risk of developing diabetes in future. And also being a member of high risk groups, which are Aboriginals, Hispanic, South Asian, Asian, African, African Caribbean. And also if you have a, wo a, wo a woman have given birth to a baby more than nine pounds or four kilos, you are at risk. Also, if you have high blood pressure or high cholesterol, you may be at a risk for diabetes. And also if you have extra weight, now these are the uh, factors we could control, like having uh, extra weight, eating healthy or exercising, uh, these are in our hand. And also socioeconomic status and environment. That means if you have having, for example, I could say food security, you don't have access to uh, healthy food. And also uh, these are the risk factors you can take the can risk, can risk test as Diabetes Canada to see if you're at risk for developing type 2 diabetes in the future. خطراتی که باعث میشن بیماری قند دو رو بگیریم اولا این هستش که یک سری فاکتورهایی هستن که در کنترل ما نیستن یک سری فاکتورهایی هستن که ما میتونیم کنترل کنیم خطراتی رو که ما نمیتونیم کنترل بکنیم و امکان این که بیماری قند نو دو بگیریم اولا که سمه بعد از سن چهل سالگی هر کسی میتونه در معرض خطر گرفتن بیماری قند با قند نوع دوم باشه البته الان ما در سنین پایین تر زیر چهل سالم میبینیم کسایی که بیماری قند میگیرن که به این خاطر نحوه زندگی کردن هستش همچنین اگر شما فامیلی داریم نسبتی که نسبت خونی با شما دارن مثل پدر مادر پدر بزرگ مادر بزرگ امه امو برادر خواهر اگر اونا بیماری قند نوع دوم داشته باشن شما در خطر اینکه بیماری قند بگیرین هستین و اگر شما جز این گروه های به نژادی هستین مثل ابوریجنال ها یا اسپانیش ها ابوریجنال ها منظور سرخوستای اصیل کانادا یا آمریکا بعد اسپانیایی هستین یا مال آسیای جنوبی هستین یا آسیا هستین یا آفریقایی هستین شما در مرز خطر بیشتری هستین که بیماری قند بگیریم و این یک مسئله جنتیکی هستش همچنین اگر یک خانم باردار در زمان زایمان بچهی داشته که بالای نه پوند یا چهار کیلو بوده در مرز خطر هست و اگر فشار خون دارین یا کلسترولتون بالاست در مرز خطر هستین و چیزایی که در دست شما هستش مثل وزنتون میتونید وزنتون رو کم و در حد سالم نگه دارید غذای سالم بخورید ورزش بکنید همچنین یک سری مسائل درآمدی و مالی هستن مثل اینکه شما یه مثالی میتونم بزنم که اگر از نظر درآمد در شرایطی هستین که نمیتونین غذای سالم بخرید و غذای سالم بگیرید و یا بتونین مثلا وقت بذارین برای ورزش کردن اینا همه خطراتی هستن که ممکنه که باعث بشه بیماری قند نوع دوم بگیرید و اگر میخواهید تست 
بکنید میتونید به وبسایت دایبیتیس کانادا برید و اونجا یک تستی است به اسم کن ریسک و اونو انجام بدیم ببینید که در معرض خطر هستین یا نه great so man as what are the signs and symptoms that someone should watch for that might indicate that they could be having diabetes okay and the signs and symptoms i i need to explain first sometimes i could say even one in three canadian may not have any symptoms to be aware of having diabetes and it just suddenly you go something to the hospital and realize you have diabetes but these symptoms some people may have all of this and some may have just few like being feeling thirsty because you have high sugar your body needs more water to take care of it you feel thirsty or you need to go uh, urinate more often because the body wants to get rid of the extra sugar or some people rapidly they lose weight because the sugar is not utilized in your body or you may you may feel very tired again you're not using the whole sugar coming to your body as energy and you're feeling tired i mean you will sleep and you wake up you rest you will still feel tired and also you may have blurred vision because the sugar goes to your eyes and collects water there and it causes you don't see properly and this is sometimes the reason people go to see their family doctor to mention like i have difficulty with seeing clearly and also you may realize you get a cut or you get an infection and it does take long time to heal and also you may feel the tingling or a numbness at the end of your toes or your fingers and also you may have a, as a male you may have problem with getting or keeping an erection حالا علائم بیماری قند اول باید بگم که بعضیا اصلا ممکن هیچ علائمی نداشته باشن و فقط معمولا هم یک تا سه نفر در کانادا ممکنه هیچ علائمی ند... علامتی نداشته باشن که بدونن بیماری قند دارن در همچین مواقعی شما معمولا ممکنه که برای خاطر یه چیزی و یا اینکه اصلا حالتون خوب نباشه احساس سرگیجه بکنیم بریم بیمارستان و در اونجا تشخیص بدن که شما بیماری قند داریم و شما نمیدونستیم حالا علائمی هستش که شما ممکنه همه اون علائم رو داشته باشین و ممکنه فقط یکی دو دایی اونا رو داشته باشین یکی تشنگی بیش از حده به خاطر بالا بودن قند خون در بدن بدن احتیاج به آب بیشتری داره دومین هستش که زیاد ادرار میکنید برای اینکه بدن میخواد از این شکر اضافه خودش رو رها بکنه بعد ممکنه بعد بعضی یا شدیدن وزن از دست بدن به خاطر اینکه شکری که توی بدن میاد استفاده درست ازش نمیشه و انرژی نمیده یا اینکه ممکنه احساس خستگی شدید بکنید دوباره برمیگردیم به اینکه شکر در بدن استفاده نمیشه که به شما انرژی کامل بده ممکنه که بیناییتون به حالت کدر بشه نتونید خوب ببینید و این وقتی که شکر و آب تو چشم جمع میشه و معمولا این یکی از دلایلی هستش که خیلی ها میرن به دکتر و بعد تشخیص میدن که بیماری قند دارن بعد ممکنه که مرتب افونت بگیرین مثلا گلوتون چرک بکنه همچنین ممکنه که یه بریدگی تو دستتون به وجود بیاد یا اینکه یک کبودی به وجود بیاد که مدت خیلی طولانی میکشه که این درست بشه و خوب بشه و همچنین ممکنه که احساس سوزن سوزن شدن به قول معروف در فارسی ما میگیم در انتهای انگشتان دست یا در انتهای انگشتان پا حس بکنید و یا اینکه در مورد آقایون ممکنه که از نظر جنسی مشکلاتی داشته باشن و اینا همه علائمی هستش که باید به شما هشدار بده که بهتره بریم برای قند خونتون تست بشین فانتاستیک من از تلاس Um, what some of the complications of diabetes can be. And we actually have a question from one of our viewers who is particularly interested to hear about eye problems and what uh, people can do in response to any concerns they have about their eyes and how to kind of manage that, that form of complication. So maybe talk at a high level and then drill down a bit on eyes. Okay, eyes, because I said, uh, like, uh, as I said, because the sugar and water is uh, collected in, in, in your eyes, 
and it makes your eyes to see blurry. And I believe like it causes the pressure in eyes. Usually people with diabetes have to have their, their eyes checked once a year to make sure their eyes are okay. And if they have an issue, sometimes they see their, I, I'm talking about eye doctor, ophthalmologist to go and see your doctor sends you because you need to check your eyes every year and, and some uh, situations I have patients, they go even every six months and that has to be taken care. Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, diabetes cause cataracts, but I have patients who have diabetes and they have cataracts problem as well, but I know it increases pressure in your eyes. And also diabetes, a leading cause for uh, strokes, people with type two diabetes or type one, they are, and blood plus blood pressure are more at risk, I could say even two times more at risk having a stroke comp in comparison with people just with blood pressure. And also it could cause heart attack. People are three times more at risk to have heart attack, people with diabetes. Also they may cause, they, they could, uh, the high blood sugar could damage, um, your nerves, peripheral nerves, they may cause problems with your feet. That's why we talked about you may get tingling. And also if you have issues and your toes gets numb, you may get a cut and you may not realize and you get an infection which takes long time to heal. And uh, God forbid that uh, that may lead to amputation. That means amputation other than accident, the other cause is diabetes for amputation. And also we, we talked about it. And also one of the big causes of kidney failures is diabetes. Okay. Now, uh, in, in Farsi, برای چشم دلیل اینکه چشما باید هر سال بریم برای دکتر و چک بکنین به خاطر بالا بودن شکر چون در شکر, شکر در چشم جمع میشه و آب جمع میکنه فشار چشم میبره بالا برای خاطر همین هست به خاطر اینکه چشماتون رو محافظت بکنید توصیه شده که شما هر سال باید دکتر چشم ببینید نه دکتری که برای عینک میرین کسایی که متخصص بیماری های چشمی هستند دایبیتیز بیماری قن یکی از دلایلی هستش که اگر با فشار خون همراه باشه که معمولا بیماری قن و فشار خون با هم هستن شما در معرض خطر سکته بیشتر از کسی هستین که فقط فشار خون داره دو, دو, دو بار بیشتر در معرض خطر هستین و برای قلب در مقایسه با مردم عادی سه بار به شانستون بیشتر هستش که بیماری بسلا حمله حمله قلبی یا سکته قلبی داشته باشین بزرگترین ریسکش برای کلیه هاست که کلیه ها کار درست کار نمی کنن و اگر به مرحله آخر برسه احتیاج به دیالیز خواهد داشت و همچنین در بالا بودن بیماری قن باعث تخریب شدن اعصاب حسی میشه و اعصاب درونی هم میشه اعصاب حسی هم میشه برای همین هم شما اگر انتهای انگشتان پاتون بی حس میشه و اگر یک اونجا زخمی چیزی بشه و متوجه نشین و عفونت پیدا بکنه و یک مسئله بزرگ به وجود میاره بیماری قن یکی از چیزایی هستش که باعث قطع پا میشه اگر بیماری قند به طور خوب ازش مواظبت نشه و این به خاطر همین هم هستش که اگر بیماری قند بالا هستش قند بیماری قند داریم و قند خونتون بالاست باید کاملا در کنترل باشید. Great. So you mentioned earlier that there are some things that we can do to minimize or the likelihood that we'll develop type 2 diabetes or at least delay it from setting in. And I think that there are also the things that those of us who already have diabetes can do to live well. What are those things? Tell us a bit more. Okay, the, fir the first thing we are going uh, to talk about healthy food choices. Uh, before that, I want to mention, if you have a family history of diabetes, please have tested more frequently because you are more at risk. Now, the things in our hand, it's not just only for diabetes, it's for everyone to live healthy, to choose healthy food choices. 
and use Canada's food guide as your guide. If you look at the plate on the screen, you could see the plate is divided in three sections. Half of your plates are vegetables and there are some fruits there too, but they are limitation of fruit for diabetes. That's why uh, in your plate, you don't have lots of fruits there. Quarter of the plate, your starch, which usually we talk about size of your fist, and the quarter of plate, your protein, and it's recommended to have protein more from plant-based more often, at least two to three times a week. And red meats, maybe to reduce it to one or two times a week. Drink lots of water. The recommendation is eight cups, but you could have more than that. Replace it with the sugary drinks. They are high in sugar and they increase your blood sugar. And uh, drink more water. Yeah, and fruits, usually the recommendation for the diabetes are three servings a day. And you could still have a cup of two, one or two servings of milk to have enough calcium from there and basically follow the plate and Canada's food guide. برای چیزایی که در دست ما هستش که بیماری قند رو بتونیم کنترل بکنیم که این برای فقط کسانی نیست که بیماری قند دارن این نوع غذا خوردن و سالم غذا خوردن برای تمام مردم هستش این این بشقابی رو که در روی صفحه میبینید به سه قسمت تقسیم شده اگر ببینید نصف صفحه شما سبزیجات هست و یک قسمت کوچکی از این سبزیجات میوه هستش یک چهارم بشقاب شما پروتئین خواهد بود که پروتئین بهتر هستش که در هفته اقلا دو تا سه بار پروتئین گیاهی استفاده کنین که لوبیا و نخود و این چیزا هستن و یک چهارم بشقاب شما مواد نشاسته‌ای یا گرینز هست مثل پستا مثل برنج مثل نون و آب بخورید کم توصیه شده که کم کم اقلا هشت لیوان و اگر بیشتر بخوری هیچ مسئله نیستش آب میوه شکر داره نوشابه ها شکر دارن اینها رو محدود محدود بکنین به جاش آب بخورین میتونین دو تا لیوان شیر در روز بخورین که کسی من به اندازه کافی داشته باشین uh, Also I want to mention when we talked about the grain and starches we have to mention pasta, bread, rice, potato and corn, corn is not, corn is vegetables, but is starch, we need to be careful how much corn we are going to eat. All right, so let's bust a few myths about healthy eating, shall we, Manaz? Sure, go true ahead. True or false again, and we're going to get our viewers to just play along by themselves. Um, true or false, eating healthily means that you can't eat chocolate, and thank goodness that answer is false. Chocolate uh, in moderation can certainly be part of a healthy and balanced diet. Um, the darker the chocolate, the better are some of the other health benefits. Um, but yes, do enjoy in moderation. Uh, healthy food choices mean eating foods with no flavor. And that, of course, is false. A lot of the foods that were on the previous image are pretty yummy, and you can certainly add delicious flavorings that are still healthy, like herbs or citrus or things like that. Um, healthy eating means only eating fresh fruits and vegetables. And the operative word here is fresh. And that's actually false because um, many fruits and vegetables that are available frozen or canned are processed right off the, the vine or the tree and therefore their nutrients are locked in. And so if eating fruit frozen or canned fruits and vegetables makes it easier for you to get your half a plate full, by all means do so. And then finally, unsweetened juice has sugar in it. And it's a common misconception that the answer to that is false, but it's true. It's a natural sugar. So all else being equal, maybe a little bit more nutritious for you, but it still has a similar impact on your blood sugar. And so if you are someone who's living with diabetes or at risk of diabetes, I would argue, even if you're not, you should really limit your juice consumption. Far better to have a piece of whole fruit. Manaz, anything you want to add there? Or do you want to offer any of that in Farsi before we move on? خوردن شکلات در موقعی که بیماری قند داریم میتونیم بخوریم بله شما میتونید شکلات بخورید هر چیزی رو 
در اندازه محدود میشه خورد این نیستش که شما بیماری قند دارین هیچی نباید بخورین جواب دوم بودش که غذایی که سالم هستش بیمزه است نه شما خیلی غذاهای سالمی میتونین درست کنین که خیلی هم خوشمزه باشه شما اگر روغن رو به اندازه کم بزنین نمک رو به اندازه کم بزنین ادوی های مختلف بزنین هنوز هم میتونین غذای خوشمزه بخورین آیا سالم غذا خوردن معنیش این هستش که فقط سبزیجات و میوه تازه بخورین نه اینجا در کانادا ما سبزیجاتی داریم که فروزن هستند فریز شده هستند و خیلی هم عالی هستند میوجاتی هستش که به اصطلاح فریز تو فریزر میتونیم پیدا کنیم در فروشگاه مواد غذایی هنوز هم کوالیتی خودشون رو دارن میواهایی هستند که توی کن میاد ولی بهتره که میوایی رو بخرین که در آب میوه توی کن رفته با، گذاشته شده باشه و همچنین اگر سبزیجات رو میخرین که کن هستش اینا رو حتما چند بار با آب بشونین که نمکش بره ولی تمام اینها سالم هستن که استفاده بکنین بعد میان میگن که آب میوه ها چون بهشون شکر اضافه نشده اینا شکر ندارن نه ما میدونیم که میوه ها به طور طبیعی شکر دارن در نتیجهش وقتی آب میوه میگیرن آبی با شکر دارن در ضمن شما باید بدونید که شما برای گرفتن یک لیوان آب پرتقال ممکنه سه تا پرتقال استفاده بکنین در نتیجه سه تا 15 گرم در یه پرتقال متوسط شکر از 45 شکر هست 45 گرم شکر بخورید ولی اگه شما پرتقال بخورید یه دونه میخورید باهاش فیبرم میگیرید در نتیجه بهتر این که به جای اینکه آب میوه بخورید خود میوه رو بخورید So man as we've talked about what we should eat but healthy eating is about more than that isn't it Yes healthy eating is how to eat where to eat with whom to eat and uh, how to make your food. Uh, that means be mindful when you're eating. Everything in moderation. It goes back to dark chocolate. You still could eat a little bit of the dark chocolate or regular chocolate, but be mindful. When you're eating, take your time. Enjoy your food. Chew your food properly. And also uh, pay attention to your hunger level and your fullness level. When you feel you are full, stop eating. And also cook your food because when you cook at home, you know what are you putting in your food. It's okay to eat sometimes outside, but home, food at home is much healthier. And also plan in advance. That means have a menu for yourself. Write down what you wanna make a quick menu. You don't have to have a fancy menu. And also I always recommend when you write your menu, write before you are going for shopping and then you buy your uh, ingredients and bring it home and make a healthy food. If you live with your family, get your kids involved in cooking. Get your husband, if you could, involved in cooking. <laughs> and uh, also enjoy your food. That means still make your cultural and traditional foods. They are uh, ways you could make it much healthier and still have enjoy your culture and your uh, traditional food. food. And also eat for with others. If you have a family, try to have at the same time your meal time. If you live alone, try to have once in a while with your friend. Have your meal with your friend. You could do it now virtually probably on, uh, on your computer to eat with your friend. And also when you're shopping, do use the, uh, read the food labels and make healthier choices. And also make water the drink of your choice. It's the best thing for you. Now, غذا خوردن سالم فقط این نیستش که شما چی میخورید. غذا خوردن سالم این هستش که چی میخورید، کجا میخورید، با کی میخورید و چجوری غذاتون رو آماده میکنید. اولا این که مایندفول یعنی کاملا فکر کنید که چی میخواید بخورید. و وقتی غذا میخورید از غذاتون لذت ببرید. وقت بذارید برای غذا خوردن و آرام بخورید و آرام بجویید. توجه بکنید وقتی گرسنه هستین غذا بخورین وقتی که احساس سیری کردین غذا خوردن رو همونجا تب متوقف کنید بیشتر در خونه غذا درست کنید به خاطر اینکه غذایی که شما در خونه درست میکنید میدونید که چی توش میذارید این غذا سالم تر هست اشکالی نداره که این موقع بخوایم بیرونم غذا بخوریم ولی غذای توی خونه همیشه سالم تر است 
اگر تنها زندگی میکنید که خودتون غذا درست میکنید اگر در منزل با خانواده و با بچه ها زندگی میکنید سعی کنید که اینا رو اینا رو این بیارید و ازشون بخواید که در غذا پختن داخل بشن و به شما کمک بکنن و لذت ببرن بعدش هم میتونین غذاهای فرهنگی خودتون و غذاهای ملی خودتون رو درست کنید و ازش لذت ببرید ولی خب به طریق سالم تر بعد اگر با خانواده هستین که صد درصد سعی کنین که همتون در یک زمان غذا بخورین و این بیشتر لذت بخش هستش اگر تنها زندگی میکنین میتونید قرار بذارید با دوستتون بخورید الان هم که میتونین روی کامپیوتر غذاتون رو بذارین با دوستاتون شرکتی غذا بخورین وقتی میرین خرید بکنین اون لیبل های روی مواد غذایی رو بخونین و غذاهای سالمتر رو انتخاب بکنین و آب رو از قسمتی از غذاتون بکنین و به جای هر نوشیدنی دیگه آب بنوشید I would also just add for our viewers, Manas, that Diabetes Canada has a lot of really delicious and healthy recipes available on its website. So yes. that can be a resource for those of us who sometimes uh, get in ruts with our diets and maybe need some inspiration. Um, another thing we know we can do to live well and minimize our risk to diabetes is to get moving. So talk to us, Manas, about physical activity. Okay, physical activity should be part of everyone's life. It's not just for diabetes. There are benefits from physical activity. First, it reduces your stress, helps you to sleep better at night. And physical activity, activity doesn't mean you have to go to gym. No, you could not, when we have good weather, you could go for a walk, at least 10, 20 minutes walk every day. That's going to help you. And some of the exercise ideas we would say, I, I spoke about walking. If you are a person to run, you could go for running. You could go out uh, for hiking. And I, actually I have seen in this pandemic, we, I have never seen this many people in my neighborhood. But the families and everybody is hiking, biking, running, everything. And it's a good idea if you like swimming, go for swimming and also weightlifting. If you cannot go out, you are not a person to go to the gym, weightlifting lift, are good for your muscles. I usually say to my patient, you're watching TV, if you have cans at home, grab two cans, and while you're watching TV, just use your arms and use the cans to do some exercises on your muscles. And also, if you could buy small weights and have at home and use. If you are a person to do sports, Go and join teams and do uh, play with them and have some fun. And also if you like bike, again, it's one of the things I mean, uh, I, I think increased in a big way during COVID, everybody's riding bike. No, if you are the, and the, the also, if you are, you, you have a job, you're sitting all day or you're at home watching TV sitting or uh, like reading, it's a, Good idea and recommended at least every 20, 30 minutes stand up and walk around and come back and sit down. Let that blood to move in your body. And if you are the person you have never exercised in your life and you want to start exercising, first talk to your family doctor to see if you don't have any health condition and also start slowly and build up and exercise. It helps with the blood pressure, it helps with reducing cholesterol, it maintains weight, it reduces stress, it helps you to sleep better at night, and also it burns sugar, brings the blood sugar down. برای فعالیت بیشتر برای اینکه بتونیم بیشتر فعالیت بکنین اول باید نگاه کنیم ببینیم که چه چیزایی ما از فعالیت کردن و ورزش کردن میگیریم. منافش چی هستش؟ منافع ورزش کردن این هستش که اولا استرس رو کم میکنه کمک میکنه شبا بهتر بخوابین فشار خون داشته باشین فشار خون رو میاره پایین کلسترول رو میاره پایین وزن رو در حدی که میخواین نگه میداره و توصیه شده که اقلا در روز حداقل حداقل 20 دقیقه یه فعالیتی بکنین و بهترین فعالیت راه رفتنه 
اگر کاری دارین که میشینین تمام روزا توصیه این هستش که هر 20 دقیقه 30 دقیقه بلنشین یه راهی برین اگر تو خونه هستین و میشینین تلویزیون نگاه میکنین مدت تلویزیون نگاه کردن رو کم بکنین یکی از ورزش هایی که میتونین انجام بدین راه را پیاده روی مخصم وقتی که هوای خوب ما در کانادا داریم برای پیاده روی به این اقرام 20 دقیقه تا 30 دقیقه اگر اهل دویدن هستین بدوین اگر اهل شنا هستین شنا بکنین وزنه فقط این نیست که وزنه حتما داشته باشین شما تو تا کن لوبیا هم تو خونه داشته باشین میتونین بگیرین دستتون و در بازاتون رو ورزش بدین اگر کسی هستین که اهل ورزشین به جز تیمایی ورزشی بشین بریم ورزش بکنین اگر دوچرخه دوست دارین دوچرخه برین سوارشین و حالا اگر شما هیچ موقع ورزش نکردید و اگه میخواییم ورزش شروع بکنین قبل از اینکه شروع به ورزش بکنیم با دکترتون چک بکنیم که از نظر بدنی آمادگیشو دارین یواش یواش شروع بکنیم و بعد اینو به ندرت به،, به تدریج اضافه بکنین و ورزش رو بکنین قسمتی از زندگی روزانه خودتون Great, that's great advice من از So now if I may, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to speak to a few resources that Diabetes Canada has to offer. And I wonder if uh, once I'm done covering this in English, if you wouldn't mind running over some of the highlights in Farsi for us. So um, Diabetes Canada helps uh, people with diabetes by funding research into how best we can prevent or delay, manage and ideally cure diabetes. Uh, we do a lot of advocacy uh, to make uh, the governments uh, at all levels aware that they need to make diabetes a priority and address issues such as access to medications and care for people with diabetes across the country. So we really advocate to improve the lives, the day-to-day -day lives of those affected. Uh, we also work closely to support healthcare providers providing them with the latest information and research on diabetes and diabetes innovations and by helping to um, give them ongoing education and support for how they best care for those of us with diabetes. We provide a lot of information to people affected by diabetes through our website, our social media channels, and uh, sessions such as this, which can be found on our YouTube channel. And if you've got any questions, whether it's about diabetes in general, about programs that you might access to help address the financial costs of living with diabetes, or whether you've got personal questions about your own uh, diabetes management, call us at 1-800-BANTING and we'll be able to answer those questions. دارن صحبت میکنن راجع به اینکه دایبیتیس کانادا چطوری کمک میکنه به بیماری قند در کانادا اولا اینکه اینا پول میدن برای تحقیقات و برای تحقیقات که در مورد جلوگیری کنترل دایبیتیس و یا احتمالا مالجه دایبیتیس بیماری قند بعد برای دولت کانادا اینا توصیه میکنن که بیماری قند در ارجحیت باشه و بهش اهمیت بیشتری بدن اینا کمک میکنن و با گاورمنت کار میکنن که زندگی کسایی رو که بیماری قند دارن بهترش بکنن و به اونا کمک میکنن که بیماری قندشون رو بتونن کنترل بکنن به دایبیتیس کانادا کسایی رو که به صلاح در سلامتی سرویس هایی رو ارائه میکنه مثل دکترا مثل پرستارا مثل خود من که به صلاح متقصی بیماری های درمانی هستم تغذیه هستم در مورد بیماری های بیماری ها و کارم تخصصم در بیماری قند هستش ماها رو کمک میکنن کنفرانس میذارن و منابعی دارن در وبسایتشون که ما اگه سوالی داشته باشیم میتونیم بریم اونجا اینا رو پیدا بکنیم و و همچنین اینا با دنیا با نشن با تمام بیماری های قند ارگانیزیشن های جاهای دیگه در تماس هستن و در آخر هم که اگر شما 
چیزی میخوایین در مورد بیماری قند بدونی سوالی دارین میخوایین یه همچه ویدیوهایی رو نگاه بکنین به وبسایتشون رو میتونین برین یا یعنی که شماره بز... یا تلفن بزنین به شماره ای که در پایین این صفحه نوشته شده Thank you, Manas. So I think we're nearing the end, uh, nearing the end of our time together today. Um, I wanted to kind of close by um, making one last call out in case any of our viewers have any questions that we can answer before we wrap up. Just also to remind folks that um, there are a number of ways that they can contact Diabetes Canada for further information or for help, and we would really welcome and invite them to do so. I'd really like to thank you, Manas, for your expertise and your time today. I think you've offered our viewers excellent advice and information, and I hope it will really support everyone in living well uh, and, uh, and, and being healthy, uh, especially in these strange times. So Manas, any final words for our viewers? Uh, I, I, I would like to thank you for involving me in this. This is my, my work. I have been doing diabetes edu education for 10 years. I will say eat healthy, be active, and stay home. If you don't have to go out, if you're outside, keep your distance, and um, mask is mandatory, have your mask. And check your blood sugar if you have to, uh, type 2 diabetes, be in control. These are words to live by, Manas. Thank you so much. Thanks to those of you who tuned in, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Be well. <laughs>